the metaverse is a, it's a big, hairy idea, and it's going to be really tough to implement, right? I mean, he, he was a trailblazer right, for Web2. I mean, his work on Facebook really did help define Web2. I think that if anybody from Meta was retaining my services to get my professional opinion, I, it would. this would sound a little bit different, but, but you know, between friends. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin, joined by longtime personal friend, expert in my eyes in the crypto space, Seth from Mine Your Biz YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me. Hey, it's a pleasure, and uh, and thank you, Austin, uh, you and Aaron, and the extended sort of YouTube crypto creator fam. It's starting to feel a lot more friendly around here, and which you wouldn't expect when the price is going down. You'd expect all the daggers to come out. No. Um, yeah, this place is great and you guys are great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. And we've been on panels together, other people's shows together. So I'm great to get you on our channel. Just for the audience, what's your background? How'd you get into crypto? So my background is in corporate training. Um, I did corporate training for a couple of companies that your audience may have heard of. Microsoft, before that, Google, before that, Samsung, before that, Dell and AT&T. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, with a background in media production, including uh, a small stint um, at a couple of Hollywood studios. Um, and so it, it's weird. It's a skill set that kind of naturally led me to this sort of career progression towards something that I could be passionate about and that I could get up on stage and talk about with conviction and with understanding. And um, But yeah, it was primarily consumer tech. And after that phase of my career ended, I was like, okay, I've probably done a lot of damage by getting people to try some of this consumer tech that's spying on them and is getting them to give up their, their privacy and give up their sovereignty. And so open source and cryptocurrency and, and blockchain tech more broadly, but especially Bitcoin, just really fit the bill. So that's the that's then till now. And that's why I want to pick your brain on Zuckerberg going full on into the metaverse, changing the company name, the ticker, the strategy, everything. But just one more big picture question. What excites you the most about crypto? Is it Bitcoin, decentralized money? Is it Web3? What's it for you? It's sovereignty, in a word. It's sovereignty. And I'm going to upset everybody equally, right, in the room. The, the Web3 maxis and the Bitcoin maxis, you're not special, guys. The, your, your individual little pods and silos, you're not special. What is special is giving people sovereign control over their data, including their value, right? Like uh, Bitcoin being that, that store of you know, the, of, of value. Um, so control over their value, control over the, the assets that they purchase uh, in a more direct way, and then control over future bearer instruments that will come out of all these Web3 experiments. So yeah, sovereignty. So Mark Zuckerberg is truly going all in on the metaverse. General thoughts? I think it's a Hail Mary. Austin, I think it's a Hail Mary. I think if uh, if uh, you, you saw Terminator 2, right? The, Absolutely. The, the, the seminal James Cameron film about a dystopian sci-fi future in which this robot that can change into anything in the very end, once it's tricked into falling into this vat of, of uh, molten metal, what does it do? It tries to turn into anything that could potentially help it to save itself. And I think we're seeing Facebook in its death throes, just like that Terminator. So, Yeah. In Zuck's mind, like he has spoken very loosely, you know, in the, he's spoken positively about crypto, yet he, and I'm sure in his mind, he thinks he's the good guy and he wants to help the world, but then he chooses a permissioned centralized entity to do so. What am I missing? Or what do you think is Zuckerberg missing? Going in, you know, uh, well, thinking one way and going in another way. I think, I think um, like so many Silicon Valley types uh, that have come after him. I mean, he, he was a trailblazer right, for Web2. I mean, his work on Facebook really did help define Web2. Even at a time when Twitter was still trying to figure out what its business model was and what, it's, you know, what it wanted to be when it grew up, Facebook had kind of already figured it out. And they said, okay, we've got all this data, got all, all this uh, on this permission platform where we're helping people to do microblogging. Remember that word? Um, but we, lost, we lost track of, of the plot there, right? Um, on, on social media, but but microblogging platforms, extending all these different functionalities, embracing some of their competitors and then extinguishing them, they had a very clear idea of what they wanted to do. And that was be an information juggernaut. Um, so 
So yeah, I think a lot of Web2 and a lot of Silicon Valley companies have taken pages from the Facebook playbook to be able to earn millions, hundreds of millions, billions of dollars. Um, every unicorn that came after pretty much had to pay homage to what Facebook did. Now, like they're at the end of the line for Web2. Web2 has very clearly run its course. The unbranding movement has is in full sway. So yeah, now I think um I think that he's trying to do what he can to marry the ecosystem that made Facebook so profitable, whether or not it was a great thing or a good idea. He's trying to marry all of the technologies and all of the the ideology that made Facebook a profitable company to to own and to run and somehow get that to work in a web three world. And he just hasn't gotten the memo yet, nor has his advisory board gotten the memo yet that web three is going to be so firmly permission-based and marketed to sovereign individuals or individuals who want to maintain their sovereignty that they, they just can't do that. It's just not going to work. Um, and so, you know, like, like tech startup greats, he's going to have the audacity to say, well, this is our vision. We're sticking to it. We're going to, we're going to try to bring this to market. And two to three years from now, uh, everyone will ask us how we did it. Um, or we'll fail trying, right? Like we'll, yeah, but, but that's, that's the path that they're on. So, so yeah, I think it's just, it, it's hard to teach. Um, it's not that it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. I mean, I don't want to use too many like platitudes here. Um, but it, with the Silicon Valley types and with the tech startup types, they're used to earning money a certain way. And Web3 seriously threatens that. And so they're doing everything they can to appear to be a, uh, to, to have curb appeal, right? For, for retail. Um, but not understanding that the fundamental nature of who will opt into systems like that has totally changed. They're actually going into an entirely new market and marketing to an entirely new avatar. So he just is probably gonna have to learn that the hard way. Let me, I, well, in one sense, Zuck Zuckerberg is a genius in the sense that he sees where the trend is going. And I think we all agree that we are going in the Web3 world. So kudos to Mark Zuckerberg for that. But in another way, do you think, I want to sort of define your point. Do you think it's inevitable that censored permission systems lose or how can decentralized permissionless systems win? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think that if, um, I think that if anybody from Meta was retaining my services to get my professional opinion, I, it would, this would sound a little bit different, but you know, between friends, just, uh, just speaking candidly. I don't think they need to go with permission systems in order to get all of the data harvesting that their previous model was built on, the previous business model. Ethereum is a totally open ledger. Bitcoin is a totally open ledger. Most derivative networks that are based on the same technologies are totally open ledgers, including the ones that everybody likes to talk about as the dark horse candidates like, you know, like Cardano and others um, that, that maybe stand a shot at, at uh, taking more of the market cap in the future. These are open and um, and public ledger systems <clears throat> decentralized yes but open and public so it doesn't take a whole lot of work to be able to pull user information from these networks and to map that onto the previous databases the work is actually quite trivial and we're seeing that already being done by uh, by three letter agencies in the united states and it's it's been done for years it's kind of an open secret in the cypherpunk community that that's been the FBI's and the IRS's and the SEC's greatest ally is distributed public ledger technology. There's no need to have a private ledger or a permission system in order to continue to grab that data. So, yeah. And then how, what would you say to like, if a friend says to you, most people don't care about self-sovereignty. Like if we look at the majority of people that came in and bought Bitcoin in this last bull cycle, the majority are probably just keeping it on their FTX account, keeping it on Coinbase. So, the, you know, over 50% probably don't care. So they'll probably choose the easiest tech that they can handle, which might be Facebook, which might be Meta. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's a very common refrain. I think um, I think in a private group chat, you you may have seen that we had a little bit of banter about, you know, this this type of phone versus that type of phone and what's more private. And everyone has certain assumptions about what is privacy and, and what versus what is security versus what is anonymity 
versus what is confidentiality. Like all these words mean something. They're not the same thing. Um, and those distinctions, they can be hard for uh, for the uninitiated person to make at first because they're just not thinking about it, not because they're unintelligent, but because they just haven't spent enough time you know, wrestling with that topic. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of people... <clears throat> I've got, a, I've got, I don't want to mis misattribute this quote, but I think it's Henry Ford who, um, who talked about how the central banking system, that it's, it's, it's just as well that people not know how banking works or they would, they'd be rioting in the streets. I think the same is true of privacy actually, and, and data sovereignty and holding, uh, having, uh, having a bearer representation of your financial assets and your personally identifying information. I think if more people truly understood what the ramifications were of not having direct and full control over those things, first, there would be riding the streets. I actually believe that. And then they'd be saying, yeah, I never want to touch anything that Facebook makes ever again for the rest of my life. So yeah, I think it's just because they, they just don't know. And not because they're unintelligent, not because they're dumb, but because they just haven't wrestled with that topic enough uh, and read enough on that. Uh, or maybe seen enough bad things happening to other people to just realize, oh yeah, this could potentially be very, very bad for me. Uh, and then imagined just how much worse it could get um, if there's more control granted to these companies. So let's yeah, go. I, I, I think it's unfortunate. Let's go a little further on that, a little thought experiment. Because as we agree, Mark Zuckerberg, he's no dummy. He is a smart guy. We don't agree on how he's doing it, but he's no dummy. If Mark Zuckerberg is 100% right, what will Meta look like in five years, and how will that affect the average person? Wow. Uh, if Mark Zuckerberg is 100% right, Meta will look an awful lot like how Facebook does today, but with a new coat of paint, right? Like you'll use a different login feature in order to uh, access your assets. But the database that's used to hold your assets and to hold every one of the interactions that you have with other people, social, financial, and otherwise, will look very much the same. A fairly centralized database on uh, massive infrastructure from some company like, like Amazon, AWS, or, uh, or like Microsoft or like Google hosting all the servers. Um, with Facebook, of course, also having a healthy amount of their own servers, but, but really the, the, the rich getting richer, the strong getting stronger um, from a data perspective, it's not gonna look very different from how it does today, except that it's gonna, have a couple bells and whistles, right? New buttons, one or two, and uh, yeah, a fancy coat of paint, just a you know different different color scheme, maybe a a dark mode. Ooh, um, but <laughs> right, um, it took Facebook an awful lot of years of people petitioning, by the way, before they actually did add that. But, um, but I'd that's use the thing. it. It's, it's I'd use yeah. it. <laughs> I'll admit it. Yeah, I would use dark mode. That would give me one percent more favor for Meta, but um. What's our best? What are the protocols out today that are a best shot, in your opinion, to separate the metaverse um, control from these corporations? So the best platforms, um, uh, th this is where we get into kind of dicey territory, as I understand it. Uh, the legal counsel that I've ever spoken to who are legit experts on the matter to this point. And again, this is a snapshot. Sorry for all the disclaimers, Austin, but I appreciate we are that. still largely in the Wild West. That's an important thing to acknowledge that there's a lot, uh, there's, a, there's a decided lack of legal precedent for a lot of things within the cryptocurrency ecosystem. This may be different if somebody from your audience is watching this six months from now or a year from now, um, you know, thumbs up, like make a comment if you're watching this two years after the interview. Um, but like things can change pretty fast because we're still establishing precedent. But as it is right now, using zero knowledge mixers, as long as they're part of a permissionless protocol, right? Not a centralized platform, not a website you go to, to have cryptocurrencies mixed, but a decentralized protocol, something if you're on Ethereum, like Tornado Cash, that is perfectly legal. It's perfectly above board. It's perfectly legal for you to use with pre-tax dollars or post-tax dollars or the cryptocurrency equivalent, provided you still disclose to the IRS and the other uh, relevant three-letter organizations, which funds are yours? But it severs the link between one wallet to another wallet. And I think technologies like Tornado Cash are going to be essential in maintaining our, our personal data sovereignty and our personal data privacy from some of these platforms. Now, Tornado Cash doesn't work on 
metaverse ecosystems, but it does work on certain assets on Ethereum, Avalanche, Binance Smart Chain, uh, Polygon Matic, or any of those similar networks that you can just log into with, with MetaMask. Um, so, but you're going to hear a lot about ZK proofs, zero knowledge proofs, um, and, and ZK platforms. And as long as they're decentralized, these are going to be an essential building block of metaverse ecosystems moving forward so that people can take their data. And if they, they really want to, they can take their ball and go home, literally take their, you know, their digital assets and go somewhere else with them without anybody from the past being able to see, oh, that's the wallet you sent it to, or that's the metaverse you're playing in now. Like, no, that's not your business anymore. I want to sever those ties and move over to this ecosystem. So that's an essential piece of tech. Seth, you're dropping alpha right now. And I appreciate that. I want to hear from the audience. Please give us a comment down below. Dude, thank you so much for joining me today. Final thoughts for the Altcoin Daily audience. Final thoughts are... The metaverse is a, it's a big, hairy idea, and it's going to be really tough to implement right. Apropos of our conversation today, Austin, Facebook, Meta could get it wrong. They, they could very easily get it wrong. Many of us feel like they got Web 2.0 wrong. So if you don't like what they're offering, the easiest way to not get wrecked by them is to abstain. Just don't participate. Um, but do look for, for some of those, those other features, as mentioned before, zero knowledge proofs, your ability to maintain full sovereignty over your data and read those terms of service very carefully. If you're not sure, that's what I said. Seth, thank you for joining me. The links for Seth, mind your business, mind your biz is down below. Thanks, man. 